What's happening guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So tonight we're going to take a look at the October 4th edition of Impact. Kind of a mixed bag here. There's stuff I liked, stuff I didn't like. We did get another match announced for Bound for Glory. And we did have uh, some good stuff that happened between Austin Aries and Johnny Impact. So, open the show with Rich Swan versus Matt Seidel. Seemed like the crowd was kind of in the match, out of the match. We heard the horn a few times, and it seemed like they were distracted with something. Um, but, you know, this was expected to be a good match between these two men. Um, obviously, they've been building this up for probably about a month or so now. Um, but we saw some good things from both of them. Uh, we did see a no-hands Hurricane Rana from Seidel. That Rich Swan landed on his feet. Swan attempts one as well. However, Seidel reversed it into a powerbomb. Really nice spot there. Um, you know, like I said, some good things from both these guys. Seidel did his thing underneath the ring. Um, it seemed like Swan was about ready to put the match away. He heads up to the top. Matt Seidel's laying on the ground. He gets the ref's attention. Ref goes to tend to him. At this point, we see somebody come out, kind of grabs uh, Swan off the top rope. Holds him in a powerbomb position, looking to where to go, and then he throws him in the ring. Matt Seidel gets on top, picks up the victory, and it is the debut of Ethan Page. Um, I was very surprised that we saw him again. Uh, I'm going to talk more about this later on in the segment, uh, or later on in the show, when we get to another segment, which leads to a match at Bound for Glory. Um, but yeah, no, it was really good to see Ethan Page. Um... I'm a fan of his. I was sad when we kind of wrote his character off and heard nothing about it. And I know he wasn't very happy with his position because he was kind of on the sideline. At least he posted that on Twitter a while ago. But it's good to see him back. And like I said, we'll talk about this more when we get to it. Uh, we go backstage and OVE is there. Dave is freaking out about the attack from last week uh, at the hands of the Lucha Brothers. Uh, he says that both the Lucha Bros have magic powers. Uh, Callahan calls them out to meet them face-to-face -face tonight, so we will get to that later on. Uh, then we get Eddie Edwards is getting a phone call. He thinks it's Alicia. However, it turns out to be Moose. Uh, Moose says he has Alicia held captive, and to meet him at a bar, I guess one that closed down, I think it was in 2014. Um, so... Again, that plays out later on. Then we get Scarlett Bordeaux coming out. She is joining Josh Matthews and Don Callis on commentary. Um, Don and Josh obviously tripping over themselves with the presence of Scarlett Bordeaux. Uh, <laughs> I think Don squirted his water bottle. He's like, oh, I got wet. And then Scarlett was like, I, I, I'm wet too. And I was like, oh, man, good stuff. Uh, but obviously she is out here to scout, I guess, for a new champion or the next champion. I think that's what they said. And that leads us into Eli Drake's open challenge. Um, Eli cut his promo, did his usual thing. Just not not getting the reaction he should from the uh, the Mexican crowd. Uh, unfortunately, you know, there there is that that language barrier. Even though Eli threw in some Spanish here and there, it just d d didn't seem to translate well with them. Um, his opponent is La Parca, um, this out of shape older man. Uh, not L.A. Park, La Parca. Uh, so he comes out, he yells at Eli in Spanish, and they uh, have a match, I guess that's what you want to call it. We got very little offense or a little, very little wrestling going on here. I think the one move we saw was uh, a neckbreaker that Eli went to give La Parca, which he always hits out of the corner, and La Parca kind of took it on his side rather than on his back and it was just it wasn't pretty looking uh i think eli went out of the ring grabbed a chair went in the ring he went to swing at la parka la parka ducks gets a hold of the chair he goes to go after eli with it eli ducks out of the ring and then he just leaves and walked to the back and that was it Scarlet was even, it seemed like she was confused on commentary because they were all, you know, uh, hyping up Eli Drake and talking good about him. However, this, this segment did absolutely nothing for him, so I don't know what's going on here. I'm still hopeful that we get an open challenge segment at Bound for Glory, which, well, like I said, being hopeful here, 
bring out Chris Jericho. I mean, that that would be fantastic because the rumors of Chris Jericho debuting for Impact Wrestling have been floating around again recently. So I, I would like that to happen. I really would. And I think that would be a perfect way to introduce Chris. But we will see in a, a little uh, over a week. Uh, then we had Conan and LAX backstage. Conan's talking about not taking the bait last week after having his mask burn, and Santana and Ortiz were like, what the hell, man? Uh, then King and the OGs show up. They obviously get in LAX's face. OGs go and grab the titles that are holding up. They have shots they were going to take, I guess, for Richie. Uh, so uh, King and the OGs take their drinks, King drinks it and then spits it in Conan's face. Conan does nothing. Not to break the seas fire, but uh, I- I'm going to say this now. LAX is going over 100%. I don't, I don't know where it's going to go from there as far as King and the OGs are concerned, but I-, I still am firmly behind LAX unless next week changes my mind, but I think they're going to take it. All right, so we go backstage, and this is where Ethan Page and Matt Seidel are. Seidel says he was trying to help Rich Swan. However, Page has been the one to accept his teachings, and this leads to Seidel and Page challenging Rich Swan and a mystery partner at Bound for Glory. Uh, so there was no mention about Ethan Page's alter ego, Chandler Park. Uh, I mean, had there been mention, I could see them using Abyss as Swan's partner since there is history between them. However, I don't know who they're going to use. I don't know if this is going to be someone new they're introducing, someone on the current roster. Um, I mean, we did see Neville return in uh, Dragon Gate over the weekend. I would love for it to be him. However, I do not think it's going to be him. Uh, But I, I don't know. Maybe we'll find out next week, or hopefully they'll save it for Bound for Glory. I think that would be the right place to uh, to introduce somebody if they're going to do it. Then we have Murder Clown with Katarina versus Joe Henry Hangredo. I need a drink for this one. So, Murder Clown and Katarina come out. Then we get Joe Henry with Grado coming out, and Joe obviously has a new music video about murder clown and katarina and he plays it and swing and a miss it got no reaction virtually from the crowd i was so so about it i mean it is what it is uh we did see joe hit a nice fall away slam on murder clown but that was really the extent of his offense throughout the match uh murder clown ends up going over with a big splash from the top after the match grado gets a low blow Very well deserved. And then Murder Clown puts uh, Joe Hendry on a table and hits him with another splash through the table. And that was that. So, I mean, the whole thing, this angle continues with Katarina, Joe, and Grado. And I just don't know what the payoff is here. Where where are we going with this whole thing? Um, I mean, is this just going to end up with Joe Hendry and Katarina? I I feel like, I don't know, this is kind of really holding Joe back. I guess they just don't have anything for him at the time, and they're just giving him TV time. Uh, But we will see where this goes. Hopefully it ends uh, next week. So we uh, have Eddie Edwards. He's showing up at the location of Moose. He has Kenny in hand, obviously. Gets into the room. Moose is there with Alicia. He tells Eddie to sit down. They go back and forth how, you know, Eddie you know, screwed moose and everything like that. He's, he, he's been a bad friend. And then Eddie ends up admitting that. And then moose says at bound for glory, Eddie will be, or he will end Eddie Edwards. Uh, at this point, Alicia, uh, I think Eddie screamed now Alicia and Alicia grabs the water off the table, throws it in moose's face. Eddie comes around, attacks moose. At this point, killer cross comes in, grabs Eddie, pushes him up against the wall. Eddie gets two thumbs to the eye of cross or, um, and both Alicia and Eddie Edwards exit, and at this point, they get down to the street. Uh, Eddie tells Alicia, hold on. He grabs his cell phone out. He calls Johnny. He says, hey, Aries isn't with him. He's alone. Uh, I, I mean, the way it was shot was... I, I like this segment. It was it was bad, but good. Like, it was shot really, really cheaply and amateurish, but it was 
it was good. I, I like the content here. Um, and it led into the next segue, which was we went to commercial and came back. And Johnny Impact comes out. And obviously, he's backstage looking looking for uh, Austin Aries, that is. Then he comes out to the ring, calls out Aries. Aries comes out. It was just a really good segue into this moment since, you know, the whole thing is Aries has had his henchmen, so to speak, and that's why Johnny couldn't get his hands on him. Uh, but this this was probably the highlight of the night for me. This this really helped build this feud for Austin Aries and Johnny Impact, which has been quite lackluster, so to speak. Um but yeah, uh, so Aries comes out. I mean, uh, Johnny Impact comes out. He calls out Aries. Aries comes out. He's got his arm in a sling. He's moving very slow. Uh, obviously, Johnny wants Austin Aries to be a man and come out by himself at Bound for Glory. To which Austin Aries, you know, says they will not be at ringside. Moose and Killer Cross. Um, they go back and forth. Aries says that Johnny doesn't know who he is. He could be Johnny Impact, Johnny Nitro, Johnny Mundo. You know, he puts one egg in each basket, and he's got nothing to show for it, while Austin Aries is putting every egg in one basket, and he has something to show for it. Obviously, the Impact World Championship, which he says he won the Impact World Championship in 45 seconds, and one of his first uh, defenses, or one of his, yeah, I guess first defense, second defense, something like that, was against uh, Johnny Impact, who he beat, um, and all Johnny has done is fail in his career or in his attempt at gaining the uh, Impact World Championship. Uh, Aries, you know, says he can skip the embarrassment at Bound for Glory and join him as, you know, along with Killer Cross and uh, Moose, and he can look like a winner. Obviously, Johnny doesn't want that. Aries goes after Johnny with the belt. Johnny ducks. Obviously, Austin Aries isn't hurt, and Johnny hits him with a super kick, and then Starship Pain. Um, but yeah, no, this was a really good segment. I liked how this built more for the feud. We actually had, uh, obviously, Austin Aries is fantastic on the microphone, but even the uh, content that Johnny Impact had was pretty good. There was just some fire put behind it. We actually had some emotion here. Um, and, you know, like I said, it's regardless of the build, it's going to be a fantastic match. Um, I'm thinking that Johnny Impact is going to be able to pick up that championship, but Obviously, I'll get more into that next week in my predictions video. But this seems to have led to a six-man ta tag match taking place next week. It's going to be Moose, Austin Aries, and Killer Cross versus Johnny Impact, Eddie Edwards, and Fala Ba. So that's that's good for Fala. Um, I, I think they mentioned that uh, KM didn't make the trip to Mexico, so he won't be out there. Um, we go backstage and Brian Cage is there and he is responding to Sammy Callahan. He says he'll come out to destroy the Chris brothers and then he's coming after Sammy. And we see the Desi Hit Squad backstage. They are upset after their loss last week to LAX. You know, basically saying we had we won this match, we would have gotten a title shot. Gama's back and he's got his broom in hand and you know I love that, so... Um, he says next week, however, it will be Rohit versus, versus Gama Singh, as I wrote, versus Gersinder Singh, um, and uh, we will figure out who the weak link is here. Uh, so, I mean, this is decent. They're at least doing something with them because, obviously, the tag titles are held up in the LAX OGs feud, so not much you can do there, but they're giving them something to do, and like I said... Gama Singh with the broom in hand is entertaining to me. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I still wonder what they're going to do with as far as the rest of the Desi Hit Squad goes because they think there's, what, two other members, and we have not seen or heard anything about the other two men. Uh, this leads us into our GWN flashback, which was Sting and, I think, Hogan from 2011, Bound for Glory. At least they kept this nice and short and sweet. That That was it. That was what I was thankful for. Uh, we go backstage, and Scarlett is walking about. She runs into Jack Evans. He's showing off. He does, a, I think, a backflip. And then uh, Puma King walks in. They have words, Jack Evans and uh, Puma King. And then uh, Scarlett leaves and goes into another room, and that's where Petey Williams and Trevor Lee are sitting on a couch. They both get up for Scarlett to sit down. Petey says that uh, she has the rare opportunity to learn the secret behind the Canadian Destroyer. This, this was good. I really enjoyed this. So uh, he was going through the motions. He says, except, you know, 
you want your back arched this way, and the person, you know, the head goes between your legs, normally it would be me, the person's head would go between my legs, but since you're the one doing it, I'm going to have to put my head between your legs. And at this point, Trevor is just like, what the hell, man? You're just being a creep. And this leads to uh, Trevor and Petey arguing back and forth. It was a good segment. But this leads to what's going to be a four-way match next week between Jack Evans, Puma King, Petey Williams, and Trevor Lee. So that should be a good match. Um, I really like what they're doing here with the whole Scarlet thing, scouting new talent or scouting her next project, so to speak. Um, it, it's it's entertaining, and uh, it gives everybody that doesn't have a role something to do, like we saw with Trevor Lee and Petey Williams. We haven't seen them at all, I think, in the Mexico. Oh, no, Trevor did answer Eli's challenge a couple weeks back, but we haven't seen Petey since the tapings in Canada, so it's just something. Uh, then we get the Lucha Brothers, and they accept Callahan's challenge. So later on the, tonight, they will all six men will be facing off. Uh, then we get Kiara Hogan versus Sue Young. Uh, every every match, Kiara is looking better and better. Um, they seem to be giving or have more confidence in her, so they're giving her more of a uh, a role during the match. She had gotten a lot of offense, more than I expected. Uh, I expected Sue to be protected a little more just because she's a former champion and and it's just the way i thought they were going to do it um kira was about to put sue young away undead maid of honor gets involved but sue and sue is able to finish it off with the uh panic switch which i really like that move it's just she does it so flawlessly it's just it's just a nice a different move uh and it looks it looks like a good finisher but yeah, good match between the two of them. I like what we see from Kiera, and Sue went over, which she should, so that was good. Uh, bridesmaids come out with coffin in hand. Four of them battle back and forth. The ones that were, well, Allie was at ringside, and the uh, bri- undead maid of honor was at ringside as well. So the four of them battled, and Kiera ended up eventually going inside the coffin. So we go backstage, and Allie is obviously besides herself, saying that Kiara is gone, and she's just replaying everything that happened, and she says she knows what she has to do. So I wonder if this is going to be something that happens at Bound for Glory or something that happens next week. Um, It seems like Rosemary is somewhat near ready to come back, at least from her little tweets that she's been putting out here and there. I know she's been doing rehab, so hopefully it's not too long. She's definitely missed on the program. And we still will finally get that Sue Young versus Rosemary feud. I'm, I'm sure we're going to get something between Allie and Sue Young again. Um, we did see the casket match between the two of them right after, I think it was Redemption. Um, but I, I think this would have been a, a good spot to do it had they not done it then. But I'm not sure what, what they're planning on doing here, but... We will see. Maybe we will see Rosemary return in a non-wrestling role for the time being. Um, Yeah, and then uh, OVE comes out, and they say they don't want to wait till Bound for Glory. So we are going to have OVE versus the Lucha Brothers and Brian Cage, all six men in the ring. Uh, Cage ended up hitting both Chris with a German. I think Dave was on, or Jake was on Dave's shoulders, and then uh, Brian hit a German on Dave. It was a really nice spot. Sammy ends up getting them disqualified after hitting the ref. And we get a whole... Then then all hell breaks loose. Brian Cage suplexes uh, Jake Chris onto the outside on all four men. Uh, Phoenix hits a corkscrew plancha off of the, uh, the, I guess, the elevated guardrail where the fans are. And uh, they continue to fight. And then the show goes off the air. I'm glad they didn't give anything away. I think they just kind of wanted to give us a glimpse at how good this match is going to be. I think, you know, people were upset that you just used all these guys that could have done single matches and kind of put them together uh, especially with brian cage not defending the x division championship but uh i'm glad they didn't give much away because like i said this should be a great match um i still would have liked them because i mean when you look at ove versus brian cage and the lucha brothers on paper it just it seems very lopsided i, I still wish they would have you know, debuted a bunch of members into OVE, and then, you know, th- then it seems like, all right, you got all these guys now on OVE's side. Everything is OVE rules at Bound for Glory. It seems like they have a better chance at winning. But uh, we'll see. It should be interesting. Um, 
like I said, on paper, it just looks very lopsided. Uh, I mean, as far as the Mexico crowd, it seems like a lot of segments are really either hit or miss with them if they're very familiar with the talent, like, you know, the Lucha Brothers, Brian Cage they're familiar with, Johnny Impact. They all seem to get a pretty good reception. Otherwise, things are flat, but... We have one more week of the tapings and then Bound for Glory and the New York tapings. So interesting to see what's ahead. Um, still no word on if they're going further with their TV deal with Pop TV or if they're moving elsewhere because the rumors were that their TV deal is up in November, but no word on that. Um, next week, I think Tessa is defending the Knockouts Championship against the other luchador who she ran into with Fabi Apache. Uh, we have that six-man tag, the Fatal 4-Way. Uh, should be a good show. Hopefully, ties up loose ends before Bound for Glory. Who knows if we're going to get another match made. But, as usual, I'm looking forward to it. I always enjoy wrestling on Thursday nights. And even though there was some crap on the show, it was overall good. And, yeah. That's pretty much all I have for you guys. Thanks for checking out my video. I'll see you guys on Sunday, maybe Saturday, for the Impact Report. Um, but until then, thanks for checking out my video, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.